In this example, we're given an equilibrium equation and only the initial concentrations and the value of Kq, and we're asked to calculate the concentrations of the reactants and products at equilibrium. Here's the example. At 485 degrees Celsius, the reaction H2 gas plus I2 gas gives 2HI gas has a Keq value of 49.8. 1.5 moles of HI is added to an empty 500 milliliter container at 485 degrees, and the system is allowed to reach equilibrium. What are the concentrations of H2, concentration of I2, and concentration of HI after the equilibrium has been established? Notice we're given moles of HI rather than concentration. We're also given the volume of the container. Remembering that molar concentration is equal to moles divided by liters, we can calculate the initial concentration of HI. It is 1.5 moles of HI divided by the volume in liters. The volume of the container is given as 500 milliliters, so we need to change it to liters. We take the 500 milliliters and multiply by the conversion factor 1 liter to 1000 milliliters, which gives us 0 0.5000 liters. So the initial concentration of HI is 1.50 moles divided by 0 0.5000 liters, which comes out to 3.00 moles per liter, or 3.00 molar. So we'll make a note of that up here, that the initial concentration of HI is 3 molar. Because we're given initial information and we're asked for equilibrium information, we must use an ice table or an ice box, as some teachers call it. In this particular type of problem, where we're given only initial values in the KQ and no equilibrium values, it's best to use three separate horizontal rows for equilibrium concentrations. You'll see why as we work through this problem. We can start by going to the cell which represents the initial concentration of HI, and we write in the value for the initial concentration, which is three molar. In this ice table, we'll leave out the molarity unit to keep it simple. If you read the question, you'll see that it doesn't mention adding H2 or I2 to the container. It just says HI is added to the container, so we can assume that the initial concentrations of H2 and I2 are both zero, and we write zeros in here. Our next step is to find the changes in concentration. Before we do that, we need to know which way the reaction will move as it goes from its initial state to a state of equilibrium. In order to find out which way the reaction moves, we insert the initial concentrations into the Kq expression in order to calculate a trial Kq. So the trial Kq equals the concentration of HI squared divided by the product of the concentration of H2 times the concentration of I2 putting 3 in for the concentration of HI and 0 in for the concentrations of H2 and I2, we get 3 squared divided by 0. Now anything divided by 0 is undefined or infinitely large. So the trial Kq, which is infinitely large, is much greater than the actual Kq, which is given on the top of the screen as 49.8. Because the trial Kq is much greater than the actual Kq, the initial ratio of products to reactants is much too high. So in order to achieve equilibrium, the reaction will move to the left. Notice both H2 and I2 have initial concentrations of zero. It is useful to know that a reaction will always move toward the side which has one or more zero concentrations. So in this case, because H2 and I2 both have initial concentrations of zero, the reaction will move toward the left. In cases where there is a zero concentration on one side, you don't need to calculate a trial Kq. You now know that the reaction will always move toward the side with a zero initial concentration. Because the reaction moves to the left, the concentrations of both reactants, H2 and I2, will increase so their changes in concentration will be positive. And the concentration of the product, HI, will decrease, so its change will be negative. We're not given any concentrations at equilibrium, so we don't know how much H2 will increase in concentration. So we'll call it X. 
To find the changes in concentration of the other species, we must use the coefficient ratios in the balanced equation. We'll start with I2. Looking at the equation near the top of the table, you can see the coefficient ratio, or mole ratio, of I2 to H2 is 1 to 1. So to find the change in concentration of I2, we take X times 1 over 1, which is equal to X. So now we know the concentration of I2 will also increase by X as equilibrium is established. Now for the HI. Looking back at the balanced equation, we see that the coefficient ratio, or mole ratio, of HI to H2 is 2 to 1. For every one mole of H2 that is consumed, two moles of HI are formed. So to find the change in concentration of HI, we take X times 2 over 1, which equals 2X. And remember, since the reaction is moving to the left, the change in concentration of HI is negative. So the change in concentration of HI is written as minus 2X. Make sure you understand this step and make sure you use coefficient ratios every time you determine the change in concentration of a substance in an ice table. So now we have determined the changes in concentrations of all three species in our reaction. The reaction moves to the left and the H2 concentration and I2 concentration each go up by X and the concentration of HI goes down by 2X. Our next step is to find the equilibrium concentrations. Remember the equilibrium concentration is the initial concentration plus the change in concentration. So the equilibrium concentration of H2 is 0 plus X, which equals X. Similarly, the equilibrium concentration of I2 is 0 plus X, which equals X. And the equilibrium concentration of HI is 3 minus 2X. So now we know the equilibrium concentrations of all three species in terms of X. So the question now is, how do we solve for X? The way we solve for X is to realize that what relates the equilibrium concentrations of all three species is the KQ expression. KQ equals the concentration of HI squared over the product of the concentration of H2 times the concentration of I2. We can substitute 49.8 for the value of KQ. And we'll also fill in the equilibrium concentrations in terms of X. The equilibrium concentration of HI is equal to 3 minus 2X. So we substitute that in here for the concentration of HI. To keep things simple, we'll write a 3 instead of 3.00. Because the concentration of HI in the KQ expression is squared, we must also square the 3 minus 2x. We can substitute x in for the equilibrium concentration of H2. Because the equilibrium concentration of I2 is also x, the product of the concentrations of H2 times the concentration of I2 will be x squared. Notice that in this fraction, both the numerator and the denominator are squared. So we can avoid having to solve a quadratic equation here by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. So we take the square root of 49.8 on the left side and we cancel the exponents 2 from the numerator and the denominator on the right side. The square root of 49.8 is 7.0569. We'll work with more significant figures than required at this point. Then we'll round off when we get to the final answers. So we have the equation 7.0569 equals 3 minus 2x in brackets divided by x. We'll carry this equation up to the top of a new column so we can keep everything on the screen. We can get the x out of the denominator on the right side by multiplying both sides of the equation by x. This brings the x up to the top of the left side and we have the equation 7.0569x equals 3 minus 2x. In order to get our x's on the same side, we add 2x to both sides of the equation. This gives us the equation 7.0569x plus 2x equals 3. 
So we group the x's on the left by adding 7.0569x plus 2x, which gives us 9.0569x. So the equation now is 9.0569x is equal to 3. So to isolate x, we divide both sides by 9.0569. And we get x equals 3 divided by 9.0569. We divide 3 by 9.0569, and we get 0 0.331. So now we know that x is 0 0.331. We can now go back to our ice table, and knowing that x equals 0.331, we can substitute this value in for x. So the equilibrium concentration of H2 is equal to x, which is equal to 0.331 molar. Similarly, the equilibrium concentration of I2 is also equal to x, which is 0.331 molar. To get the equilibrium concentration of HI, we substitute 0.331 in for x in the expression 3 minus 2x. So the equilibrium concentration of H2 is equal to 0.331 molar. The equilibrium concentration of I2 is equal to 0.331 molar. And taking 3.00 minus 2 times 0.331 gives us 2.338 molar for the equilibrium concentration of HI. Because 3.00 has only two decimal places, our answer has to be rounded to have only two decimal places also. So it's changed from 2.338 to 2.34. So now we have the values for the concentrations of H2, I2, and HI once equilibrium is established. And this is exactly what we were asked for in the original question. So now we can state our final answer. When equilibrium is established, the concentration of H2 is 0.331 molar, the concentration of I2 is 0.331 molar, and the concentration of HI is 2.34 molar. In this type of question, we can check to see if we're correct. We do this by inserting the values for equilibrium concentrations back into the KQ expression. Remember, the value of 2.34 for the concentration of HI was rounded to two decimal places. When we insert these concentrations into the KQ expression, we'll use the unrounded value of 2.338. So checking, the KQ expression is KQ equals the concentration of HI squared divided by the product of the concentration of H2 times the concentration of I2 Substituting the equilibrium concentrations in, we get 2.338 squared divided by 0.331 squared, which works out to 49.9, which is very close to the given value for KQ, 49.8. Because some rounding was involved in our calculations, an agreement this close is quite acceptable. So we'll take the 2.338 and round it back to 2.34. And all three values for equilibrium concentration have now been checked. So we can restate the final answer here, knowing that the values have all been checked.